So namaste once again. In the previous monthly meeting, we had talked about an appraisal of the current state of society and then the solution, the all encompassing resolution in light of the right understanding. So we have talked about the programs that we can take up and now we'll talk about the plans. So we'll revise certain portion of the content that we had discussed earlier and then go ahead. Next slide, dear. So we have been discussing harmony in the society for the past one year. We have been discussing various aspects of harmony in the society in our monthly meetings. So we started by discussing the human goal, which can be comprehensive, including all levels of living of a human being. And we could also see the program to go ahead in fulfilling these goals. So the first priority is right understanding every human being, which ensures the prosperity in the family because we are able to identify the need for physical facilities correctly only with right understanding. And we are also able to relate to the nature rightly with right understanding so that we can fulfill our needs properly. Now with this to ensure, we are able to ensure fearlessness in the society with a feeling of trust. And when we are able to live together happily with mutual happiness, mutual prosperity, then we are also able to nurture the rest of nature. So we can ensure coexistence in the nature. Now with this clarity of goal, we can chalk out the programs. So we are able to see that there are five dimensions of society. The first one being education sanskar, the second one being health sayam, that is health and self-regulation, then production and work, justice and preservation, and exchange and stories. And we could also map our goals to these dimensions. We all are there in the education system and we can now see clearly how education is the foundation of a harmony, harmony society, how education lays down the foundation of harmony in and around. So it's a very good opportunity for us that we are there as a, as a part of education system and we are a building block of a harmonious society of universal order, isn't it? Gee. Next video. If we are not able to understand our goals correctly, programs correctly, then we get caught up in problems. Now with lack of comprehensive understanding of the human goal, we nurture so many wrong preconditions inside us. And that's how we are not at peace with ourselves. There is no harmony in the family. Even at society, at the level of society, we are into wars, domination, exploitation, and we are also depleting, polluting the nature. So the common assumptions could be like money is everything, nobody is trustworthy, isn't it? The only goal of life is to make money and so many wrong conditionings may get into our assumptions. And then we try to accumulate by any means. We try to indulge so that we can get pleasure temporarily. And this leads to disharmony in the society also. And of course, when we try to fulfill needs without being clear about the limitedness of the needs, then we go on exploiting the nature and the nature gets depleted. So we try to master over the nature, exploit the nature. Now, these are various issues that we can see and I've been analyzing these problems and not going to the details of the problems, but we get obsessed with consumption, with profit, with sensual pleasure, going by these raw assumptions. And we can see that we are investing so many resources, fighting terrorism, fighting wars, and their problems in the nature. So this is an appraisal of the current state. We want to come out of it. Now, how to come out of it? We are next slide. So there could be two possible approaches. Indeed. So one possible approach is the problem-centric approach about which we had discussed earlier also. And the second approach could be the solution-centric approach. Now, when we go for a problem-centric approach, we focus on the problems and then try to solve them. And the solution is not all encompassing. It is a piecemeal solution, a temporary solution. And many a times while solving one problem, we create some other problems. Maybe we are trying to fulfill our needs in the family 
and we try to resolve the problem of deprivation in the family. But in that process, we may create this harm in the society, fear in the society, isn't it? Or we try to resolve the fear in the society and we may destroy the nature. Second problem is that we get depressed when we try to have a problem-centric approach because all the time we are thinking about problems and you can see that nowadays a common problem that is arising in the society is overthinking. People are getting into overthinking. Why? Because all the time we are thinking about problems. We do not have the all-encompassing resolution. We do not have the solution in a comprehensive sense. So we are trying to fight out problems. Okay, trying to give some piecemeal solution. And we are not clear about the feelings which can be mutually fulfilling. Our role in the society and nature. And that's how we get embroiled with, by these problems. Now the second approach, the solution-centric approach, <clears throat> the solution-centric approach is basically focusing on solutions. And when we try to work for solution-centric approach, we try to understand the human being, we try to understand the whole existence and the role of human being in this existence. So we have a program that gets defined by itself. It's not focused on some situation outside, some circumstance outside. It is holistic, it is universal, it is definite, and it is continuous. Now, in light of that, whenever we face some problems, we are able to resolve. We are able to solve the problems. Now, what do you think? Which approach is doable? Which approach is acceptable naturally to us? The problem-centric approach or solution-centric approach? You can respond in the chat box. And if there are some questions regarding these two approaches, then please let me know. We can discuss that. The whole session has to go in a kind of dialogue. I will be proposing certain things from my side, and you can always raise your hands and ask questions. Solution-centric approach. Yeah. So do you think that you can always have a solution-centric approach? Given any kind of problem, can we always have a solution-centric approach? OK, Renuka ji is saying no. Supraja is saying yes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Saida ji is saying. Okay, Jatish Babuji is saying yes. Sandeep ji is saying no. So what is your opinion? Seema ji is saying no. Okay, you can raise your hand. Yeah, I'll give examples. I'll give examples, but I would like to listen to our participants. What do you think? What do they think about this issue? Ji, Rashmi Tripathi ji. Rashmi Didi, you have been provided with the mic. You can unmute yourself, Didi. Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Didi. Uh, Didi, Didi, Didi what can I, proceed. Yeah, what I believe is that every problem has a solution. Or the answer to Hoga wo, yes, either it will be yes or it will be no. There are only two options. And uh, so, means uh, solution is always there. We just have to think about it. But when we are thinking about the problem, that is the problem is very big, then we are not able to find the solution. So if we take a solution-centric approach, we will definitely find a solution. This is what I believe. Nice, Didi. Any other opinion on this? Any other opinion on this? You can raise your hand. Some of our participants have said that no, we cannot always take a solution centric approach. Okay, Saida ji. So, when you start uh, optimistically uh, saying that we'll have a solution and you reach halfway and you realize that facility is not there, then you need to take up some other route. I wouldn't say that it would be a problematic approach for it, but you need to divert from that route to get the solution. So, you have to start with an optimistic solution, reach to the solution, try and reach to the goal. And if you're not able to, because the facility is not there, or some other means, you need to change the resources at that particular time and then realize and try and attain at least an approximate solution to it so that you can at least fulfill the basic needs. I'm not saying at least you, you're not, you have to attain 100% of that. At least the basic needs of the people are fulfilled. At least the basic needs, if you're able to fulfill of the people, then my I would be happy to say that I've reached my goal or my solution is attained. That is what I mean to say. Okay. Okay. 
डॉक्टर महेंद्र डॉक्टर महेंद्र महेंद्र भैया यू हैव बीन प्रोवाइडेड विद द माइक यू कैन अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ भैया जी भैया हेलो मैडम एवरी प्रॉब्लम विल हैव सॉल्यूशन इफ वी फॉलो सॉल्यूशन सेंट्रिक अप्रोच वी डेफिनेटली वी कैन सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम दिस इज माय ओपिनियन ओके भैया ओके नाइस लेट मी गिव एन एग्जांपल ऑफ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू अप्रोचेस सो मे बी दैट आई हैव सम हेल्थ इश्यूज आई मे हैव डायबिटीज आई मे हैव बीपी आई मे हैव कोलेस्ट्रॉल इश्यूज एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट and when these issues crop up then i go to solve them so if i have diabetes i try to find solution for diabetes if my cholesterol level has gone up i try to find solution for cholesterol and yes, so on yes. so this is a <laughs> problem centric approach yeah, yeah 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 now when i go with solution centric approach i am able to see that i am not the body i am central to my being being of the human being and then i want to see the body as my instrument and then then i become responsible to my body i and i always interact with my body with a feeling of self regulation so i arrange for nurturing the body protecting the body right to live in the body and then i naturally ensure health now if due to some factors some issue crops up then i solve the issue but my program for self regulation continues now what is happening in the first case i do not have the program for self regulation some disease has uh, cropped up and then i try to cure that disease and that process might be the case that whenever some disease is there i get nervous i get perturbed i get uncomfortable and it could also be the case that uh, when i am perturbed i spoil my behavior with the spouse i spoil my behavior with my colleagues friends this could be the case so what is happening here a problem has cropped up i do not have the complete solution for that i am trying to do some piecemeal piecemeal thing there and then in that process i am creating this harmony also in and around when i have the solution centric approach i am at peace with me i am happy within and then with that happiness within with that peace within i am able to find out the right way to solve the problem now these are two different scenarios where we can exactly see how the solution centric approach works and how the problem centric approach works ji i hope that example makes it clear If you have any other question, then you may please raise your hand, and then we can talk about it. Uh, Last time, I read it briefly. G. Maya, read it, Didi. Is it this? G. Read it, Didi. You can unmute yourself, Didi. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. So, uh, please, uh, if I can take an example, I will take an example in my language. No, why is it not clear? Is it clear? Read it, Didi. There is a noise from your end. Is it clear now? Huh? Yeah, your voice is audible, Didi. But we could hear some background noise also, Didi. Now is it clear? Uh, now we can proceed, Didi. Fine, Didi. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, uh, if I am actually walking in a jungle, then I am lost completely. And uh, if probably if I take this as as an example, then what happens is it's a dark night, and I have to reach the destination as quickly as possible. and i i know that there are different routes because i'll be traveling the same route so since i'm lost now so there might be a short route which is full of you know stones and all that right and there'll be a long route uh, which is you know if if i consider that as a solution uh, you know where i can go uh, peacefully calm but uh, my destination is closer and i have to select the route so how do i actually choose you know is it only the short route and uh, i can make it up because i know it there could be a lot of pebbles there and stones there but i can still reach quickly but you have a long route and there is a long destination to go how do i take which which uh, route should i choose it is a bit of confusion because a solution and a problematic situation can occur it need not be always through i know that there will be solution for any kind of problems it is only our perspective in looking into the things but sometimes i feel uh, there could be another way also that that's what i feel 
Okay. So I'll say that you have given a hypothetical situation. Now, with all encompassing resolution in me, when I have you know, this understanding in me, first of all, I'll find out why I'm moving through the jungle at all. Isn't it? So what could be the right program to fulfill the basic aspiration? And I can see that it is not like passing through a jungle. To fulfill my basic aspiration, I need to ensure harmony at all levels of living. With that clarity, I will chalk out my programs. And then I will move forward with a feeling of relationship. It's not only me who is aspiring to be happy. Everyone else is aspiring to be happy and we are all related. So we'll you know, move together with a feeling of relationship and we'll start participating in harmony. So in that same hypothetical situation, if you utilize this perspective, then we can get the solution. Because sometimes in our thoughts, we design some artificial situations and then we feel caught up in that situation. But essentially, you know, we are living at all these four levels and we are always there at these four levels. The issues are the same. The issues are either of relationship or uh, yes. of participation in the larger order, isn't it? And to have the clarity. If we have this clarity, then we are able to come up with solution. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Some more hands are in. Let me proceed and then I'll take up some more uh, questions. Ji, bhaiya. Seema Singh Didi. So, you can unmute yourself, Didi. Ji, Didi. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to express myself. Uh, I think uh, the point I wanted to make was that uh, if we uh, understand that there is a problem, you know, so every problem is because of a certain cause. You know, one can always, uh, if we are faced by this understanding that yes, there is a problem, then one can look backwards, one can apply one's logic and look at the possible causes which are leading to that problem. So if we are, if we, we, give, we are given to understand that yes, these are the causes which have led to this problem, then one can work backwards, identify those causes, uh, work towards addressing those causes and certainly solution will come out of our ability to uh, probe those causes once those causes have been identified one can address them one can you know uh, find out a, a, an optimal solution any meaningful solution can can be derived from uh, the understanding of uh, the causes which have led to that problem i think i would like to look at it in a little uh, logical manner so of course someone said that one has to have that optimistic approach uh, and if, uh, you know, a problem has occurred or a problem is there, uh, you cannot find solution at the same level as at that level of the problem. One has to go beyond that level to be able to uh, locate and identify the reasons, the causes, and then work towards addressing those problems. This is uh, my take on it. Thank you okay, so much. Nice yeah. So as you go along, this will become more clear. So yes, yes we try to optimize. When you say uh, optimistic, so now optimization is one thing that we keep on doing in our day-to-day -day life and optimism is something else. So with optimism, we essentially mean that when I have the solution within, I'm always optimistic because I'm able to see that the intention of every human being is sound. Every human being has the potential to understand. Every human being has the same program to understand as of me. So I'm always optimistic. Definitely. And I think optimism mm -hmm. is something that would be naturally acceptable to each one of us. That's the basic human intention that, okay, yes, we yeah. have to have that hope. You know, hopelessness can be problematic, but when we have the optimism, when we have the hope that things can be worked around, one can find a solution. I think that's the way forward and that's uh, certainly going to lead us to a, uh, you know, to the a route where uh, easy solutions, you know, good solutions can be found to each problem. Okay, nice, nice Didi. Good sharing. Oh, yeah. So, we, we do have Rashmi Didi with us. I Didi, you can unmute yourself. I'll keep on taking questions, but let us proceed with the slides also. Ji, Baya. Ji. Ashmi Didi will get back to you sometime later, Didi. Ji. 
so how we are going to proceed so as it came out through discussion also that what is acceptable naturally is the solution centric approach and with that only we have been developing the whole content for value education and a holistic perspective about human existence and the whole existence has come out through this and through this we have been able to identify our goals at all levels and work out the details of the dimensions of system to fulfill these goals and as i was mentioning for the past one year we have been discussing various dimensions of society the next slide so now talking about the various dimensions of society as we are mapping the dimensions to the human goal we can see that education and health will take care of the physical and mental <clears throat> mental well being the justice the system of justice will take care of the relationship of human interaction then there are dimensions of production service exchange right utilization preservation and they ensure that our requirements of physical facilities are taken care of properly along with complementing with the rest of nature now one thing that we have not discussed i will briefly discuss about this uh, to enable these dimensions to function without failures what we need is the dimension of service isn't it so this is also an essential component which basically coordinates between the various dimensions of society and it also coordinates between the various steps of human organization so we'll briefly discuss about this dimension of service now ji so if you look at the structures of service then there are broadly three types of services at the level of society and the system so one would be like the systems which have come up socially so there are structures like langar where anybody and everybody is provided food of course free it is a service which is purely on the initiative of the people it is fully managed by the common people and the formal administration has no significant role to play here now there have been so many practices in the society even if you look at the festivals and the rituals they have been designed in such a way that we do not feel isolated alienated so they fulfill our need for relationship now there are systems which fulfill the needs of the body also isn't it and there have been tradition like this in our country for a long time throughout the history so one example has been given here that is there in punjab in lang the langa system is there so nobody has to beg for food nobody can die for food for lack of food isn't it with these systems in place so there are certain systems which have been there which very naturally try to fulfill the human goal so when it comes to uh, ensuring the right understanding also there have been so many systems in the society where people have been offering sharing knowledge with the society due of cost in fact if you look at the whole effort of uhd this is also a kind of service where people are coming up voluntarily without any remuneration and they are uh, spending so much of time and energy try to develop themselves as well as develop the society so this is also a kind of service isn't it so this is one kind of service which is there the second is little formal where we make some trust ngo and then these are serving certain specific purposes and these are run by the society so they are informal in the sense that it is generally on the initiative of the people and not the formal system of governance however they are partly informal in the sense that these ngo trust have to take approval uh, from the formal system of governance so partly formal partly informal in many times when we make some trust or ngo so there are some monetary exchanges also involved because the volunteers working for the ngos and trust also have to fulfill the needs of the family so the government supports them financially also and the society also supports them financially and through this such programs are conducted and there are so many trust and ngos working today isn't it in fact if you look at the whole education system of today also every school college has to be a trust because it is accepted that education cannot be a source of income if you look into the basic tenets so it is accepted that education cannot be a source of income isn't it so it has been formed as a trust and then there are ngos maybe there is some natural calamity or there is some uh, communal issue some uh, societal issue okay Uh, some psychological issue then these trusts are serving to take care of the society 
very recently uh, we had that TB day. So we can see that even the government today is taking so many initiatives through the educational institution so that they are also able to fulfill the needs of the society directly as well as indirectly. If you look at the NAC criterion, the third criterion is research and outreach. So it's not only that you have to focus on research, that you just keep on exploring the rest of nature. You have to also see how your research, how your research is serving the society. So are you able to outreach to the society or not? So it is a government mandate also that you, every institution has to adopt some TB patients, some villages in Unar Bhatavyan. The institutions have been asked to adopt some villages, isn't it? So now these are certain structures in which formally, semi-formally, semi-informally, the service to the society is being done. And then we have administration, which is the formal part of the system of governance. And this is what is known as the government, who has the responsibility to ensure the smooth running of different dimensions of the system. And this is, of course, maintained by the system. So like we have uh, presently bureaucracy and so many structures are there, isn't it? We are all aware of that. I'm not going into the details of that. So this is a completely formal system uh, initiated by the government. <clears throat> and when we are able to understand the various steps of social organization, then we are able to properly relate the uh, systems of administration to the societal system. Now you'll see that all these three types of service have very valuable role to play. The main issue is that you must realize the importance of service at the level of society and system and put in efforts for these as much as we can. And we must also motivate others to develop a mindset of service. So you can just try to make out in your area of work or your area of living, are you able to see such services prevalent? Like the third one, the formal system is, of course, everybody is aware of. But do you have some structure like this? The way it is mentioned in point number one, some longer system or trust and NGOs working in your area. You can mention it in the chat box. And this is also a very essential component of uh, society. If there is some earthquake, so many trust and NGOs will approach the uh, people who have been suffering because of that, and they will try to help them out. And if any one of us is also a part of any such system, then you can just mention in the chat box that you are also trying to serve to the society through these structures. Yes, you can mention the chat box. Okay, Amres Bhai is saying that there is no such trust NGO around his workplace. But just try to find out. Okay. In fact, this is another way to uh, participate in harmony of society. We can approach the NGOs and trusts and then conduct workshops for them because they directly communicate with the people at the grassroots, isn't it? And there are so many issues to cater to at the grassroots level. Fine. So I did not get money. Uh, yet. Just one uh, response sir, I could get. Ji. Can I can I add something, sir? Okay, briefly, ma'am. Yes. Hanji, uh, I think uh, in my, in my area in Delhi, uh, there are quite a few uh, such uh, you know places, or I could say trusts, or small uh, uh, you know endeavors that people are doing. Whether it, it is about orphanages, uh, there are old age homes also. I've uh, been to them. I've contributed there. Uh, on occasions. Uh, there are charitable hospitals also nearby. Of course, uh, there are quite a few gurdwaras where langars are organized. And not only that, I, I also see a lot of people involved in, uh, you know, various uh, traditional rituals and festivals. They come together and do community kitchen kind of a thing. So they are offering puri alu and things like that on specific occasions throughout the year. So I think these things are pretty common here in the sense that uh, people are engaging and uh, doing something for the betterment of the society from the perspective of offering the service to uh, the underprivileged or people who do not have those, uh, you know, uh, facilities. Nice, nice, Didi. I can see one message here by Renuka ji that her college is run by trustees and they have adopted five villages. 
around in and around Mysore and Mandya. Nice to see. So this is also an essential component of society. This is what I wanted to share. Ji, with the next slide. If you give me just one minute, Didi, uh, then I can share from my PC. I will not have to ask you every time. Just give me one minute. Ji, bhaiya. Dear co-explorers, we would like to remind you that in the chat box, a Google form is shared. So you can fill the Google form and submit. Thereby, you are voluntarily joining for the morning session where now the contents of UHV3 are discussed, which was started on 30th March. That is just three days before. So do fill up the Google form and you can join the morning session where UHV3 is discussed from tomorrow morning onwards. So this is for your kind notice and for your information. So we welcome all our co-explorers to join the morning session and do participate in UHV3 discussions and content sharing. Ji yeah, Bhaiya, thank I you. And over to you Bhaiya. Yeah, you're perfectly audible Bhaiya. Please Bhaiya. Nice. So moving forward, now with this clarity of the human goal and the various systems and dimensions of society, now we can see the scope from family order to world family order. Now it's very uh, kind of said very shortly that we can move from family order to world family order. But this is something that we are all into. We are all trying to ensure orderliness in the family. And then moving from here, we have to move into the family cluster and so on. But with this clarity of human goal, with the right understanding and right feeling within, we can see that we have been progressing here. We have been progressing here in terms of family order. We have been progressing in terms of family cluster order. Now being a part of the education system, we are able to address a large section of society. And gradually we have to move to the world family order. So three things to be understood here when we talk about a uh, human society that every person in the society can have a common goal and there are definite systems and dimensions to fulfill the human goal and the scope extends up to the world family we have been talking about vasudha kutumkam we have been talking about the whole world being a family but unless we are able to move from family and then move forward to other steps for human order we cannot ensure the orderliness in the world family so the family is there at the base isn't it? Now, with this clarity, we can have the plan for transition to human society. So one program is the People's Education Program, something that we have been sharing in UHV1 as well as UHV2 workshops, the People's Education Program, which is there for adults. So people with right understanding and right feeling are able to share the content with parents, teachers, policy makers, various sections of society, so that uh, the people get introduced to this potential of the program. The second program would be the education sanskar program for children. So there are teachers who have the right understanding, right feeling, and they are able to live with definite conduct. And then they are able to develop courses in academic curriculum. They are able to uh, offer socially relevant projects and also create a conducive environment within the institution, outside the institution, so that we can have a definite program for the children, right from primary to higher education. Now, with the efforts in the past, 20 odd years, we can see that we are able to now uh, work effectively in the higher technical education. But we do have acceptance to even go forward and implement the whole thing in higher education, which would also include the non-technical institutions. And there are also provisions to offer this course in the primary and secondary sections of the school. So now here we are at two, okay? If you look at the program, 20 years back then we were mostly working for people's education with that people got motivated to take it as a part of education and now we are working here at step two trying to work for education sanskar program 
and this has to be made much more effective for which we need many many volunteers i'll say and the teachers now have to all the teachers have to turn into resource persons so that uh, they are able to develop the whole institution into a resource center for the society isn't it every teacher has to be a role model for the children to develop into people with definite conduct isn't it so a lot of effort is required here but the good part is that it's completely something that takes us to a state of happiness okay and the third part of the program or the plan is the program for undivided society and universal human order now here we include all the dimensions of society so not only education we also have to work in the domain of health in the uh, area of justice uh, we have to work with people who are into exchange programs people who are working for marketing they are working for business so every section of the society has to be addressed but the foundational program would be education because from here only we are getting people who are turning into adults and then running all the dimensions of society so this will be the third program we need some more preparation to be working effectively in various dimensions of society we have started with education and we are into that process now moving by this plan of action we can go from family to the world family okay and the family is the ground where we are able to evaluate our conduct our level of understanding our feelings our competence isn't it and then from there we can gradually move to the world family but we have to go through this kind of program if there is any question regarding this please let me know i will discuss i will respond to your queries any reflection or any question regarding this plan of action what do you think you can raise your hands lata nayar ji ji Uh, sir, actually, human beings are the most intelligent people, and uh, everything is to be ensured in human beings. The problems are coming mostly in human beings, so that is a contradiction, no, sir. Uh, Think actually, again. The first part of the statement got lost. Sir, the human beings, uh, birds, etc., and there is a system uh, um, that is happening there. Uh, but why um, uh, human beings are very intelligent in uh, one way and they are behaving like this then what can be the reason sir so you can see that the birds and animals do not have the potential to understand but we do have the potential to understand so the only program ahead is to ensure the right understanding isn't it no no i have been observing a family of a pigeon now uh, the which laid egg in my house so it was very systematic so it never moved till the child flew away so uh, um, uh, such a uh, training is already built in in that um, creature and why that is uh, that thing is not happening in human beings uh, so Because... um, can we think that self will take care of that also human being also yeah because our imagination is much more developed but it gets unguided with preconditionings and sensations we see not there with the animals and birds so their imagination is very limited and mostly it is dictated by the box we can be dictated by preconditionings so with our preconditionings which can vary from person to person our conduct varies so we can see the definiteness of conduct with birds and animals but not with human beings so now the program ahead is not to turn into a bird and animal okay the program ahead is to develop into people with right understanding so there is no going back <laughs> okay thank you sir nice nice idea okay rashmi ji briefly i can take your question sir it was not actually a question i ji. just wanted to share sir because i think uh, uh this seems to be a very good uh program because uh, edu uh, means when the person will be educated people's education program as for adults because uh, the adult uh, means the parents and the teachers are only responsible for making what the student is means they are responsible for the future generation so if 
they will be given a proper i think value based education they'll give the child then i think uh, this sanskar program for children this is also very suitable because uh, and after this then there will be sanskar in children they will definitely be a universal human order pro means there will be a undivided society because we will teach our children from very uh, uh, means from right from childhood how to live together in harmony and not uh, run after these uh, materialistic things in life so i think that will definitely stabilize our society this is what i feel nice nice didi okay renuka ji sir uh, looking at the order sir there is no doubt that education will definitely the voice is very low uh, is it didi audible? you have to be a little bit louder didi renuka didi yeah is it audible now bit Not louder didi much. Can you hear now? Am I loud? Still, you uh, have to be louder, Didi. It is very feeble, Didi. Can you hear me now? Louder? Not yeah, yet. Your so, <laughs> voice Only is clear, feeble. but the volume is low. <laughs> yeah, feeble, very feeble, Didi. Okay, okay. You can, can at least you raise your voice, now? Didi. Okay, okay better, can Didi. Better. Now? Okay. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, sir, I had just one query. I'll no doubt education will definitely transform any human being uh, but i just have a query it's uh, it's a confusion uh, is sanskar is actually happens at home and whether the person is educated or not if we just look into our grandparents they had less education but the sanskar you know the kind of education that they used to give at home was uh, it really helped so many in the family and they have come up and they have really grown well and uh, you know i just wanted to know can there be a change in first children and then the adult i am really confused with that sir no no what is the question can there be a change sir uh, the order you know the education is first no doubt uh, will education alone will transform or sanskar and education is it the same as what my query is Well, the way I could understand. So, yes. So the sanskar is always there in the human being, whether the formal education has been given or not. Okay. Yes. Now, if you see the sanskar at the next moment is a culmination of our sanskar at the previous moment, then the educational process that I am into and the surroundings, the environment. So the previous sanskar as well as the education, and that would be my process to. Uh, ensure right understanding and the environment that builds up my sense that at the next moment. Now, when we talk about our adults, so they might not have the formal education the way we are having, okay? But there always has been some formal education in the society, okay, to some limit. So they might have been through that formal system, and even if not there, so in the family also we keep on giving. either some instruction to the children or we share the right understanding with the children and that also enables the right kind of sanskar and if this is not happening then the child may not have the right kind of sanskar and the wrong kind of sanskars could be there in place and then they have to be uh, replaced with right understanding and right feeling so now when you go to work for formal education then you have to have teachers you have to have policy makers who will support and enable this kind of education we have to have parents who would like to send their children to such schools of education so we do need to work with with adults so that we are able to develop the right kind of environment for an education sanskar program i hope that answers your question correct right, sir yes nice so i'll take some more questions maybe later let me just proceed with the content now now if we only work for people's education program then it may be the case that one person is able to develop 10 people in the next 10 years and this 10 people going by this kind of geometrical progression you know are able to develop more and more people and within 100 years we are able to develop 1000 crore people who have the commitment to live with right understanding and right feeling and they are able to do it also now we can also see in our life we have been progressing it's not the case that we have been able to accomplish the process of right understanding but we are into that process 
and that is ensuring harmony within that is ensuring harmony in our family in our work workplace so this kind of progression would take place when we work only for health education program this is a kind of approximate calculation not very kind of universal uh, thing that i say but a kind of approximate calculation it could be the time could be even shorter the time could be longer it will depend on so many things for example through this zoom platform now we are able to connect with so many people every weekend now workshops we are able to connect with thousand people isn't it so all these things will also determine how much time does it take so going back to this education this could be an approximate calculation now when we go for education sanskar program then the time would be much shorter we can accomplish it faster and when we are able to delve into all the dimensions of society right then the time would be much much shorter when we have the right constitution in place when we have people on the top making the right kind of policies for the uh, public in general and we are able to ensure people uh, deciding the right policy in every dimension in the society then the time would be much much shorter so this kind of progression is possible when you go with this plan of transition now when we are able to do this okay the starting point being the human education then we are able to develop the people with human conduct we are able to intervene in the constitution and then frame policies and structures we do which would enable the right kind of living in the society and then gradually in one or two generations we'll have a human order in the society and then this forms human tradition generation by generation now we'll see that when we started our journey into self exploration then we are much more concerned about our own well being and now with more and more clarity we are able to also see the well being of the society we are also able to see how the well being of society continues from generation to generation so our little mundane concerns have now extended to the human tradition isn't it this is the way it has to happen with every child when we are into this process we can also see that there are so many provisions getting uh, into the constitution also today like the national education policy has enabled this program to a large extent with which we are able to take this program effectively to every policy maker so this kind of possibility is there now when we try to pave the way towards a harmonious society so the primary task is to develop the right understanding among human beings so that they are able to commit to live accordingly and then develop the requisite skills and knowledge systems to implement the right understanding in real life so presently the education has become largely skill biased so that's why so many challenges are coming up but now people are able to see that skills by themselves cannot shape the right kind of society we need to have a value based education this is being talked about in almost every meeting i'll say so in nac also you can see that out of 1000 points 100 points have been devoted towards value education isn't it if you look at the graduate attributes five attributes directly talk about the right conduct of the child and only five uh, attributes are there for the engineering knowledge so this way you can see a transformation taking place the governments are not only talking about the gross domestic product they are talking about the gross national happiness they are talking about happiness index we very recently celebrated the world happiness day isn't it so now we can see a good kind of change taking place in the society but at the core is the development of right understanding if that is not accomplished then the system doesn't become stable so the right understanding provides us with the vision for such a humanistic education and as we discussed earlier education means to imbibe the understanding of harmony at all levels of living it's not just reading writing arithmetic but rather a process to enable the human beings to live in accordance with their natural acceptance at all levels of living isn't it so you can see that earlier we were talking about education in terms of three r's reading writing arithmetic okay now gradually isn't it it is shaping up so my college system was talking about three r's reading writing arithmetic and then we had one system which was called as the gandhian system 3h hand head and heart so it was more humanistic isn't it and now we are able to talk about the human goal isn't it so this is the way the society is gradually transforming and we have to pave this way forward so of course it calls for a huge shift in our vision today 
Now, humanistic education essentially means inculcation of the right understanding or at all levels from self to the entire existence and development of the competence to live in accordance with it. And this forms the core of humanistic education. So one should be able to evaluate all the endeavors in the light of right understanding. And we can see that in the history, people have made so much of effort to shape the society. People have devoted their life to uh, inculcate the right kind of value in the society. So we'll all have the feeling of glory for them, the feeling of gratitude for them. And with that, now we are proceeding forward. The humanistic education will incorporate appropriate integration of values and skills so that human beings are able to understand their physical needs correctly and adopt suitable techniques and production systems to cater to the needs in an eco-friendly and people-friendly manner. So we have to try to see how our own institution can ensure this kind of education. Can we float such projects, such ideas, such courses, which can enable humanistic education? Now, recently, AICT has also adopted minor degree, which Rajul Bhia was also sharing. So in the minor degree, we have a scope for involving the students in so many courses. The humanistic education will facilitate the process of self-exploration, which will lead to continuous self-evolution in the human beings. And it will also enable the realization of one's innateness as well as the universality of definitives of the definitiveness of the ethical human conduct. And this is what we aspire for, that the conduct has to be humane, isn't it? But it has to start from one's own self-exploration. It cannot be by sermonizing or laying down some uh, uh, or sharing some stories, the moral stories, or giving some instructions in from the form of do's and don'ts, should and shouldn't. It can't be like that. At the core has to be the self-exploration. And this also provides us the basis for a humanistic constitution, which is essential for the development of an unfragmented human society and universal human order. I hope we are able to see this. You can respond in the chat box. It is fine to say, can the humanistic education uh, have this kind of potential to shape the society? What do you think? You can respond in the chat box. Jigita ji is saying yes. Sima ji is saying yes. Renuka ji is saying yes. Very nice. Ji, very nice. I'll briefly take one question. Rajendra Prasad Khare ji. Madan ji, I'll respond to your query also. Rajendra Prasad ji. Yes, 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 sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Sir, wonderful uh, saying. Madanji, I'll take your question. Ji, Rajanji. Ji, Rajanji. Sir, thank you, sir. Wonderful, wonderful sharing, sir. Acha, acha, thik hai. Badi hai. Nice sharing, sir. Madanji. Ha, very good evening, uh, Kumar, sir. Ji. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, I am going through it uh, for a short analysis on it. Uh, I have seen stands here and also opportunity in UHV. Uh, I am uh, somehow confusion about its limitations or weakness. If you have a time, uh, can you tell me the uh, weakness or limitations of UHV in current scenario? See, whatever be the limitation here, or uh, if there is some weakness also, it's our need, so we'll overcome that. We'll design some more programs to overcome it. So that's why we are saying that it is a proposal, not the proposal. So if you feel that something more could be added to it, well, we can go with that. Essentially, we need to have that holistic vision. So we are not just training ourselves to any particular thing. You know? Basically, I need to be as I really want to be. For that, we can always design our programs at the level of individual or family or society or nature. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice, nice, Bia. Bia, we have Seema Didi with us. Didi, you can unmute yourself now, Didi. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, yeah, sir, I am Dr. Seema from Department of Education, Central University of Rajasthan. Actually, uh, then uh, now our uh, teacher education program is going to change. Like uh, now it is coming as integrated teacher education program. So I think we have to include uh, this in be it syllabus actually as a pre-service training we have to give this training to our uh, student teachers so that whenever they are going to school whenever they are be becoming actual teachers they can 
gradually implement that, that in this uh, students and uh, we can also give in service training to uh, those uh, teachers who are in service so i think now this integrated teacher education program curriculum is you know, uh, framing uh, that uh, program is now just only starting so i think it is a good chance that we can include uh, as a course uh, this program in integrated teacher education program four years yeah we can do that didi in fact uh, there are multiple more opportunities coming up but the only thing is that we need to develop more and more people who are able to take the content rightly and conduct such workshops so that's why we are limiting our program to this extent otherwise there are more and more opportunities coming up but you can always call us maybe after this meeting you can take okay, the sir. number of any of us and okay, we we'll see sir. how we can go ahead ji okay sir thank you sir nice nice yeah, we we have with us balakrishna pillai didi didi i think i'll uh, move forward i'll take ji, up the question ji, later on ji. please bhaiya so what will be the steps of transition briefly we had discussed in the previous meeting also so as we can see the initial step has to be the step for individual transformation as a human being how do i transform myself if i am able to transform myself then only i can be the pillar of transformation of the society around me isn't it then while doing this we also need to create mass awareness towards holistic development so this is something that we can do at every level isn't it through formal as well as informal systems and then we have to move towards humanizing the mainstream education so we have started with particular courses in value in education but gradually we have to make the whole education system value based so moving from value education we have to go to value based education and for that there is a lot of scope to innovate to create courses to introduce such inputs in various courses in fact we all might be from different streams some might be from engineering some might be from humanities some might be from science some might be from pharmacy and so on right and we can see how we can introduce this input in every course in fact we see that the more we are able to explore within we are able to properly place any course with that holistic vision so if i am teaching let's say one engineering course there also i can first place that course in terms of universal human order that where does this course gets get placed and then i can go on to discuss the particular inputs in that course so we have to move towards humanizing the mainstream education and then from there we have to move towards holistic living value based living so value education moving forward to value based education and gradually to value based living and why only the educational institutions why not the whole community so this is the way we need to move forward now going for this individual transformation we can see that we might be caught up in the lower state where we had been investing our time and energy only for physical facility uh completely ignore, ignorant about the right understanding and right feeling and that's how we were caught up in problems and the whole society was caught up into problems then from here we have to transform ourselves and we are into this process isn't it now we are able to assign the right priority to right understanding we are able to assign the right priority to relationship over physical facility and the more we are able to do this we are able to participate in the harmony society also and this is something common to all of us if you look at the complete team which is there in the panel they have been doing this and we all are able to see a significant transformation in uh, ourselves as well as in our family in our surrounding so this is the first step for transformation isn't it we have to work at ourselves and you see the more seriously and committedly i work for individual transformation i am able to participate in societal transformation also now the second step would be creating mass awareness so we can have discussion with our family members and friends now for example when we discuss the issues in the morning meeting or even in the workshops people have so many concerns regarding their family and friends okay now they have started transforming but the family members are not able to support it so they are pulling them back the friends are pulling them back so how to take them along okay this is another concern so we have to have some programs for our family members and friends also isn't it then we can see that there are people in the society who are working purposefully for something fruitful in the society they are making tremendous effort for societal development and if you can take this content to them they will also feel motivated and build up a right kind of environment in the society 
then of course the educators the teachers and the education administrators have to be included now here we can see that we started with faculty development programs but gradually now we are also running student development programs and we have now workshops getting started for leadership development program ldp management development program mdp isn't it now we also need to have parent development program so that we are able to develop the parents also many times the parents have such ambitions that the students are not able to fulfill their ambitions and the ambitions are completely biased with wrong assumptions <coughs> isn't it so the parents might have assumption that they have to send their children abroad they have to make them uh, billionaires and so on isn't it so we have to have program for educators teachers and education administrators the owners of the institutions many times people say that the program is good but it is effective at the level of faculty how to make our uh, owners understand all these things because largely the whole environment in the institution is de determined by the owners of the institution so we need to have program for them also then we have the policy makers and the administrators who are related to government and we need to introduce there also and then colleagues at work <clears throat> in fact uh, happy to share that there are some colleges some institutions where say more than 500 faculty have attended workshop so there is one rb college in bangalore there is shiksha one sandhan in odisha isn't it you can just mention the chat box how many faculty from your institution have attended the workshop so that could be a large number and we all have played a significant role in taking this content to our colleagues at work so this is the second kind of program that we can have then moving towards humanizing the whole education system we need to have various courses so in the minor degree we have all these courses like uhp3 is being run nowadays in the morning session it is also available on swayam and we have also been conducting face to face workshop for uhp3 uhp4 is vision for human society and then uhp5 has the content of various philosophies which have been talking about human values and then we have courses in psychology health sociology isn't it okay this has got uh, somewhat repeated and then human economics so various courses are there and we can develop much more courses why not have a course in journalism mass communication it is much more required isn't it uh, uh, we can have uh, courses in law so that our laws also have the right understanding so there's a lot of potential here to develop such courses in the mainstream education and then we can also uh, talk to the people of mhrd ugc aict icmr isn't it so to effectively proliferate the above effort exquisite effort uh, support and policy initiatives by monitoring agencies such as these bodies will be helpful and further it will be essential to introduce teacher orientation program the fdps at every level and we have been organizing some conferences also before the pandemic we had been okay design yes i am also a faculty of design so i can see how it is useful in fact in design i can see that most of the courses can have this orientation isn't it in fact we try to design solution and the solution can never be complete without ensuring the happiness in the people in fact the first step in design is empathy and that means to feel related to the other so there is a lot of scope to intervene in the present day curricula so we had been organizing international conferences also before the pandemic and we are going to start it again and then we can also see that we need to develop indices for happiness earlier uh, people were mostly concerned about physical facilities but now they have started talking about happiness there are departments of happiness in various countries in our own country mp government has opened anand mantrale uh, in delhi also uh, happiness curriculum is there abroad also you can see many governments have come up with departments with ministries of happiness and the next sub step would be to us to r and d was transforming the whole mainstream education into humanistic education we have been doing research but that is largely biased towards physiochemical things how we can have more and more research coming into place so that we are able to have a complete program for education 
now with that we can develop models for holistic living in the educational institutions and in the community so this will also necessitate linking the educational institutions with local development programs in collaboration with the voluntary organizations and government agencies accordingly the focus of r and d in higher education institutions will need to be shifted towards various aspects of holistic development resulting in the development of real life models facilitating universal human orders human order and this is an effort which is also on i say in up also there is one college ak garb engineering college they have been trying to do it uh, very persistently they have been conducting workshops in the evening for the children and recently they also started some production activities so that students there are making soaps uh, various edibles so they are trying to work with their hands okay in the process to become self reliant for production so we have to develop our institutions into models of holistic living so this is something that can be a doable action item for all of us so to sum up i will say that there is a need to plan for transition from the present state of society to a humane society and there are two possible approaches to transform the society problem centric and solution centric now going by the solution centric approach we get the complete vision for humane society where we can have the clarity of human goals we can also have clarity of all dimensions of a humane society the various steps of universal human order and the clarity of human tradition generation by generation and then we can plan and devise ways to move towards a humane society various steps can be envisaged and planned and also implemented so this is all that i have to share from my side some hands were raised i can respond to that provided time is there neeta didi please let me know if time permits then i can take up some questions uh, thank you so much bhaiya for the enlightening session i think we can take one question bhaiya uh, now we have uh, rajan bhaiya ji bhaiya you can unmute yourself and you can put your query bhaiya ranjit bhaiya i am sorry ranjit bhaiya you can unmute ranjit yourself bhaiya uh. can voice has been audible ji 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 audible very good evening to one and all uh sir has said very rightly that different curriculum could be framed uh, according to this uh, particular human values but uh, what were the difficulties which you face dr kumar when you were planning for this particular uh, curriculum whether it was a uh, difficulty which you faced from the organization head or from the uh, student end in fact i say that the queries that were raised by the people in the system helped us to develop this whole program in a universal manner so it has been a kind of contribution from them so many questions were raised whether we can impart value education in the classroom whether uh, education in value inputs could be universal and so many things so i'll say that whatever came from the uh, other side has only helped us to devise the whole program in such a way that it can be universal rational verifiable so we are thankful to them i'll say no, and we definitely. also saw that yeah the onus ultimately lies on us we have to develop ourselves at the core so the other person wants to understand this is something that we can see very clearly but the only thing is that there could be some conditionings in the other which has to be resolved so what were those conditioning uh, that would we like to if you don't mind could you highlight those conditioning yeah so let's say some questions or queries that were raised were like uh, the values have to be caught not taught isn't it this okay. is a common okay. saying now now if you try to explore this so values have to be taught as well as caught so the caught means the child looks at the living of the teacher but ultimately what has made the living of the teacher holistic humane has to be understood has to be explored so the proposal has to go to the child okay okay so this is one kind of question that we faced okay now whether okay. it can be a theory course so it, we said yes it has to be a theory course because Uh, just uh, doing something in terms of practice will not essentially convey the right kind of proposal so the students have to write an exam so that they have been able to listen to the whole proposal that was shared with them in the classroom so to get to know whether they have grasped the content or not so this was another concern 
that uh, doctor, doctor dr kumar whether you put up some uh, conditioning in the proposal or uh, uh, means uh, uh, whether when you were framing this particular whole curriculum did you map up in your mind that 60 to 40 ratio should be there with the theory and practical uh, we have not gone for 60 to 40 in fact the way we proposed was to have two lectures and one tutorial in every week so okay, some institutions agreed to that some could not so either they made uh, three lectures so because they were able to a lot only three hours some also made yeah. two lectures and two hours of practical practical and that yeah they also made that so could you so please if I, you don't mind could you please if you don't mind if the higher authority also permits could you please share those uh, curriculum so that it can enrich us also in framing the same thing for our institution too certainly so the aict model curriculum is already there yeah already yeah, yeah yes yeah yeah but but you have, people have already run on a trial basis also no so earlier it was on trial basis now it has become a part of system so okay. the ict has included in the model curriculum so initially the third concern that was there was not to make it a credit course but an audit course but we could see that once it is only an audit course the children do not study with that seriousness yeah, yeah this is what in i fact, was also observing yes. yeah in our university every year many students are failing also in the course of on human knowledge even i'll say that i taught this course in the odd semester recently and yes. students did fail because they have not been able to write the answers correctly so many times the students have an assumption that whatever you write in terms of values would be acceptable but that is not the case no, this is you are totally right sir this is also we are also finding the same problem yes sir yes sir. yes yes so these are various concerns but we can always talk about it you can call me anytime and we can discuss also so nice of you sir thank you for giving the very good response thank you thank you the authority also thank you nice nice sir